This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, everybody. This is Greg Morton. It is Sunday, January 16th, 2022. Um, we have a market holiday tomorrow, so I'm a little bit later doing the weekend update. And so this is the weekend video update for the Greenville Eastside IBD meetup group and the Stockyard meetup group. As always, educational purposes only. I recommend in any stocks or securities to buy or sell. And all investing has substantial risk of big losses. So we want to learn first and only then invest. So today we'll look at the M factor. Um, it's train wreck still. That's what I said last weekend. Current trading plan, risk off environment still. Um, watch list pretty much trashed or non-existent, except there's you can still see some strength in oil and gas and maybe a little bit in financial. And then just a um, few comments about our monthly meetings. So the M factor, as we know, this is the most important letter in can slim. As Bill tells us, we want to diagnose, we want to interpret, we don't want to predict. So we want to look at the action of leading stocks, the actions of stocks owned, um, which is about none now in the group teaching portfolio. So that tells us something about the market. And the market pulse, distribution day count, and price and volume on the indexes. So looking at the leaders, um, got to be asking if the, the last batch of the big growth trees are, are getting chopped down bit by bit. Um, Netflix, Google, Microsoft, Tesla, perhaps the, the last one to fail, which had been holding up. So let's look at the coloring book, the indexes, and the group teaching portfolio. Um, we'll go to Marcus Smith first. Oops. All right, so look at the NASDAQ. So, oop, go to the daily. So here's the daily. So, um, you know, RS line's heading down. IBD still yellow uptrend under pressure, which is still an uptrend, but this just looks bad. I mean, the 10 and the 21 have crossed over the 50 to the downside. Um, we came down, undercut the 200 day. I mean, maybe it'll hold right here. The red line is 10% off. So we're not even near a bear market yet. If we're gonna have one, you know, we're only halfway there. Now we may not have one, but just kind of noting where that is. And we, we talked about that more in detail at our meeting um, this past week. So this is not looking good. S&P 500, better, it's lost the 50-day. 10 and 21 haven't crossed over the 50-day yet, so a little more strength there. Nice is probably the strongest. I think we had an all-time closing high this week as well as an all-time high, it looks like, and that RS line is heading up and it's above all the moving average lines. Dow, back to battling at the 50-day. Russell, absolute worst. Um, you know, 10 and 21 have crossed both the 50 and the 200, and you got the 50, looks like it's going to cross over the 200. We're down here, the red line is 10% off the top, so we definitely are intermediate correction area on the Russell, RS line looks terrible. S&P 600, RS line's in a downtrend, um, better than the Russell, is, is stuck between the 50 and the 200, it's not down under the 200, and it's not down to intermediate correction area yet. And if we look at GMIAB, I think it is, here's the NASDAQ, so we just continue to see this advanced decline line, um, it's just flat ugly on the NASDAQ. And if we go down a little further and look at the ARC funds, clearly go to weekly charts. They're in corrections, 55% bear markets, I'm sorry, 55% off the high, 49.8% off the high, ARKQ 30%, ARKW 46%, um, just not good. So, Let's go back, um, look at the coloring book. I forgot to put my Excel spreadsheet in Dropbox, so we'll just look at it here. Um, and I haven't filled in Friday's data yet, 
but but still the the red days only had as of Thursday six buying days, twelve selling days. So that's upside down. Nasdaq MMTS is red. The Russell 2000 MMTS is red. S&P 500 Dow and the S&P 600 are yellow. The NYSE is the only one still holding green. IBD is uptrend under pressure. Market school exposures at zero under that model. And the window of opportunity is closed. And we still have some hard hits, like the NASDAQ was down 2.51% on Thursday. Um, did come back on Friday, but um, just a lot of stress, particularly since that wicked Wednesday when the markets got slammed on the Fed minutes. The group teaching portfolio, I don't even think I've loaded it, but it's still like 2% <laughs> invested. Um, so like 98% cash. So I'll upload that to the the Greenville Eastside IBD website. So none of that's good. Um, in light of all of this, still red light conditions is my diagnosis. Still a train wreck out there. It's going to take a while to clean it up. Kind of looks like this. Um, kind of interesting in, in looking for train wreck photos. This was the great train wreck here where I am of 1965. So this was over in Clemson. I'm in Greenville, about 45 minutes away. But um, these popped up and I thought that was kind of interesting. It's a big train wreck right on the banks of Lake Hartwell. Here's some other pictures from it. So it's 1965. Um, and it was interesting. Here was an article out of the news about it back when it happened. And I thought it was interesting to look at what the train was carrying. So lumber, cotton bales, paper, lubricants. It says steel pipes. It actually had a lot of um, railroad track on there. So it was not necessarily pipes. It was a lot of things that they lost. And then they had cement and clay. Um, so I thought that was interesting, just thinking about what they might be carrying today compared to what they were carrying back in 1965. So current trading plan on the buy side, um, still got my no button out. You know, it's just a, a bad environment. Key reminder, canceling works better when the NASDAQ's trending above the 50 day, we're not there. Canceling works best when the NASDAQ's trending above an uptrending 21 day exponential moving average line, we're not there. So we're just still in a hostile environment. We can look at some secondary indicators. So if you follow Matt Caruso on Twitter, he tracks new highs versus new lows on the NASDAQ. And when the new lows are outnumbering the new highs, you get the red bars. And once you get either three red or three green, he will shade the background. So you can just see how bad this is and, and just, you know, lots of weakness. This is just another way to judge the environment. We look at there's just no fear out there. CNN, fear and greed back to 55. If we look at the put call ratio, again, this is a secondary contrarian indicator, so it's still low. It's not showing fear like we see at market bottoms. And this could just be a little correction and we could go back up. But if we're going to have a bear market, we're going a lot of room for these secondary indicators to get a lot worse. All right, let's go back. Look at bull bears while we're here. Yeah, so 43.7% bulls, um, only 23% bears. So again, this is kind of a, a contrarian indicator. When the when the bulls drop and disappear, like over here at the COVID bottom, when it crosses over, that's a a pretty good signal. Um, this is a good indicator on the on the bottom side, not so much on the showing us when there's a top. So the secondary indicators are just all, you know, giving us the the same message. So we can switch to Market Smith. Um, just aren't a lot of charts to look at. Going back that first bad week of the year. Um, I thought this was a pretty good top tier watch list of about six stocks. And you can just see they've been hammered. Um, in two weeks, they were setting up, go to daily charts. I have more, I put a, we'll go back to the first one. So I kind of put a, 
a orange arrow um, on where they were that weekend. So these were, you know, ignore all the bad stuff. These were stocks that were canceling stocks that looked like they were setting up to me, could be near entry problems. You know, these are above the moving average lines. And then, bam, we get that first week of trading, including the Wicked Wednesday, and, and these just all got hit. I, that was very unusual to see everything on my top tier watch list get slammed in one week. That that was kind of telling as to the growth environment. And then Dava was the last one, so there were six of those. So, and now they're down at the 200 day in two weeks. So again, that's just confirming the weak environment. So our monthly classes, we just met this past Tuesday. We covered this, we spent, um, you know, we covered the IBD nuggets and the M factor a little bit, but spent most of an hour reviewing. It was really more than five prior bear markets. We studied five closely, the most recent five, and then looked at some other ones also as far as depth, length, character, legs down, just to see if we could find a precedent for where we are now um, to give us some guidance on where we could be he headed. So we spent a good time talking about that. I think that's the first time I've done that at one of our monthly meetings. And then we kind of looked at the good, bad, and the ugly in the second hour. And I did post analysis for you in the group teaching portfolio on some trades for 2021. And then we also discussed 2022. IPO market, not much to discuss, um, just starting to ramp up and the IPOs don't work in corrections, bear markets either. Um, if the if the old strong merchandise isn't working, they're not gonna be buying the new merchandise. So it's gonna take these a little bit to set up, most likely. So our next meeting, um, the big monthly meeting will be Tuesday, February 8th, 7 p.m. Eastern. You can sign up at the Stockyard Meetup site. The monthly tuitions, Meetings are um, 12 bucks, and if you want to order them later, they're 15 bucks. So it's better to sign up. And if you're a first timer, I send you a courtesy copy of the last meeting, which would have been January. So if you're going to sign up for February as your first meeting, go ahead and do that, and you can get the recording slide deck. And I sent out about links to five articles and other pertinent things that we discussed during the meeting. So here's a list of the prior webinars, you know, if you don't have written sell rules, I mean, the market's bad. What a great time to study and and write your set of sell rules heading into this year. So I spent three whole meetings teaching that. It took that long and it's that important. And um, then here's what we covered recently. You know, in December, we went through the rally day and follow through day system, talked about viable gap ups. Um, of course, we have earnings season just ramping up. So that's important. This week's still a lot of financials. But the following week, we'll start having a lot of the growth stocks um, reporting. And we'll also have the first Fed meeting of the year. So we'll see which way that teeter-totter goes. And then we here's what we talked about in January. So um, two meetup sites, Greenville Eastside IBD meetup, Stockyard meetup um, is where you sign up for online meetings. If you want to order prior webinars, you can email me at that email address. And I'll send you the list and the PayPal instructions. You can follow me on Twitter, and then, of course, you're watching this on the Stockyard YouTube page. So like and subscribe. There's other videos on there, how to use the group teaching portfolio, that spreadsheet. Um, if you're not keeping good records, just take that. Um, you can download it, make your own copy, and make it your own. And there's ones on there about the eight-week hold presentation, the I and can slam, that sort of thing. So 2022, still pretty cloudy. No, can't tell where we're going, but it's foggy, um, and we want to, to be going slow as we're heading into the fog. So that's it. Y'all have a good week, shortened trading week, and um, we'll see where we are when we get to next weekend. I'm out of here.